Hi, I'm Stephen Holly Martin. Thanks for joining me today and welcome to part six in a series of videos explaining what you didn't learn in school about the truth about life. Did the title of this video grab your attention? Of course you'd like to know who you are deep down, wouldn't everyone? But you're probably thinking there's no way a YouTube video is going to have the answer. But let me just say that you shouldn't be so sure. Suspend disbelief for a few minutes while I explain. What I have to say is based on a theory I've developed over years of study and the fact that the Division of Perceptual Studies at the University of Virginia School of Medicine has determined that the brain does not create consciousness. Rather, the brain is a wireless receiver of consciousness that integrates it with our bodies. I explain my theory in detail in this book, as well as my theory concerning what creates physical reality, the reality we now inhabit. A link to the book's page on Amazon can be found in the description below this video on YouTube. The book is definitely worth reading because it also explains how to use the knowledge you will gain from it to reach your maximum potential in this life and to fulfill the mission you came here to accomplish. A basic component of my theories is that behind and forming reality is a single creative force that is the opposite of entropy, that is in fact consciousness itself. Entropy is the invisible force that causes things to deteriorate. It's the reason your 20-year-old car will eventually wear out break down, and if you're not careful, may leave you stranded somewhere. Your credit card and the mechanic you pay with it to fix your old car can be compared to the opposite of entropy, which is the force I'm talking about. That the force is conscious can clearly be seen in a field of sunflowers as they follow the sun across a summer sky. The force and everything that comes from it is constantly evolving. It is, in fact, the force behind evolution. Think about it. Throughout the eons of evolution of life on Earth, needs have preceded the organs through which they were fulfilled. Eyes, ears, taste buds, hearts, kidneys, livers, and so forth. Now, your high school biology teacher may push back on this, but it makes sense to me. Even Charles Darwin had doubts that natural selection was the only mechanism at work in evolution. He said that to think that the eye had evolved through natural selection, and I'm quoting now, seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. It's much more logical that the force caused each new organ to develop in response to a need. Listen to this. The organ we call the brain is no exception. Fifty years of research at the University of Virginia School of Medicine has produced irrefutable evidence the brain does not create consciousness, but rather it connects consciousness to and integrates it with the body. It follows then that brains evolved in order to capture consciousness and to bring it into physical reality. Okay, so how does all this lead to answer the question, who are you? Well, get ready, because here it comes. You are an individuated unit of consciousness that has come to believe you're separate from the whole. In a minute, I'll get into the implications, but first, let me explain how I came to that conclusion. Although conscious, early forms of life like a sunflower or an earthworm, didn't think or feel they were separate from the force. They possessed subjective awareness only. In other words, they could not and did not think outside themselves. Sunflowers follow the sun across the sky. Animals follow their instincts per force. But at a point in evolution, we humans developed objective awareness. We were able to step outside ourselves, ignore our instincts, ponder our own existence, and make decisions for ourselves. Decisions that were contrary to what the still small voice within was telling us. 
This was the time in the history of evolution recounted in the book of Genesis, when one of the first humans, Eve, decided to eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now you know, you are a unit of individuated consciousness, and though you may not realize it, you are still connected to and a part of the whole. As mystics have been saying since the dawn of recorded history, all is one. You know, chances are this is not your first trip to planet Earth. That the brain does not create consciousness is not the only important thing researchers at the University of Virginia have demonstrated. Since 1960s, they have compiled more than 2,500 cases of children who accurately remembered past lives. In the more than 200,000 years or so since the first Homo sapien walked the earth, you have probably lived dozens, perhaps hundreds of times. If so, you've been evolving, sometimes rapidly and in some lifetimes perhaps not so much. Whatever the case may be, everything you have ever experienced is now part of you. In what would some say is your subconscious mind and what others would call your soul, and let me quickly add, the key to happiness and to a truly successful life is for your ego self in this lifetime to join forces with your higher self in a spirit of cooperation. More on that in an upcoming video. I'll finish this one by saying, we are and we remain fully integrated components of universal consciousness. As such, our individual consciousness is eternal, and our individual potential is that of the entire infinite mind. To what extent we actualize or achieve that potential through self-improvement and self-actualization is up to us. Let me put that another way. Individuated units of consciousness, once created, are immortal and have an unlimited capacity to evolve each by developing and following his or her own personal path. That's pretty heavy stuff, but I think it's true. Thanks for joining me today. If you're viewing this on YouTube, I urge you to click on the link in the write-up below and go to the page on Amazon this video is based upon. You will see that it's available in both a Kindle edition and in paperback. It's a quick read and definitely worth the time and effort because once you have done so, you will have the information and the knowledge you need to reach your full potential and to live the life that prompted you to enter this reality. See you next time.